Hello everyone and welcome to Life Begins at 20. My name is Mark and today I'm going to give you my top 10 uncommon cards from Amonkhet for Cube. This will mainly be focusing on peasant cubes, although some cards here will certainly be able to make an impact even higher. If you missed my top 10 commons video, there will be a card on the screen now and a link in the description below. Just before I get on with the video, I'd like to thank my new sponsors of my cube content, The Mana Base, for giving me the opportunity to grow and bring you all even better content. For those who don't know who they are, they're a website of fellow Magic the Gathering content creators like myself, bringing you content from all formats. Definitely do check them out over at themanabase.com, as I'm sure you'll enjoy what you see. Back to Amonkhet, and I'm really excited by so many cards in the set at all rarities. Cube builders of all levels from pauper to powered have been treated to one of the better sets in my recent memory for cubable cards. There are certainly some cards which were unlucky not to make the list, but without any further ado, let's get stuck in. Starting off at the number 10 slot, we have a very solid embalmed creature in the form of True Heart Duelist. A 2-2 two, two for 2 that can block 2 creatures each combat and more often take 1 with it can come in very handy. Plus the potential card advantage of being able to play it from the graveyard later on in the game is also very good to have. If your opponent's creatures don't have evasion, this card represents a significant amount of block damage. The duelist's ability to protect planeswalkers in an unpowered or power cube is also very very good. It's not an aggressive creature, bringing it back from the graveyard can help in a beatdown style deck, but certainly we don't cut an aggro card for this as it's not suited for that. Overall, it's a very solid protective creature that is certainly worth a look at. Moving on to the number 9 slot, we have a counter spell that's a slightly more expensive version of Force Spike, but with cycling built on in the form of Sensor. Having cycling on this for one adds a degree of flexibility to find something more impactful once on-curve development isn't going to continue. Needing to leave two mana up to play this means I probably prefer to have miscalculation in hand for the same effect, but in the situations I'd rather cycle, sensor comes into its own. Later on in the game, it does lose a little value compared to the other two casting cost counter spells, but what you're paying for is the flexibility this card gives you. Four spike abilities are deceptively powerful and the cycling for one mana is great. I certainly be looking to see this make its way into larger cubes. At the number 8 slot we have a card with a pretty average floor but a very high ceiling in the form of Bone Picker. I haven't rated this higher purely down to the fact that getting the Morbid trigger may well not be as consistent in everyone's cubes. If you can get the 3-2 flying death clutch creature in for a single black mana, it is amazing. The potential for playing two creatures at the end of turn 3 after trading is massive. The question you'll have if you do decide to put this in is which slot does it fit in as. At the number 7 slot we have another solid black creature in the form of Baleful Amit. If it's the only creature in play, the minus one minus one counter will have to go on him, making it a 3-2 lifelinker for 3 casting cost. This makes it very solid card on its own, and lifelink is always handy to have in black. But the fact that you can put the minus one minus one counter on any of your creatures potentially makes this look a lot better. Black has a lot of creature recursion and graveyard interaction, so the minus one minus one counter elsewhere may not be as detrimental as it first looks. Coming in at number 6 is a card we've had access to similar effects in the form of Cast Out. This is a 1 mana more expensive version of Oblivion Ring, but the flash aspect is a nice upside. Although using the cycling cost is very unlikely with this premium removal, the option is there if the situation arises where either you have enough removal in hand or need to make a land drop. Flexibility is the key for this card, which may put it over the top for some players who don't like to play both Oblivion Ring and Banishing Light due to them being identical, bar the minor upside Oblivion Ring has. I certainly can see it finding its way into larger cubes. Moving into the top 5 now, and we come to a creature which has provided a lot of discussion in the form of Shefet Monitor. The natural comparison is to Crows and Tusker, with a lower casting cost but a more expensive cycling cost. They both fit the same purpose of being a big body in either ramp or graveyard strategies. 
The benefit the monitor has is the cheaper casting cost, the land comes into play untapped, so it's like it costs 3 even though you need to have 4 to begin with, plus being actual ramp as you can play an additional land this turn. The difference in the two creatures is negligible, but I would prefer the monitor over the tusker. If your peasant cube is big enough, why not run both? At number 4 we have a really solid curve topper that can fit into a variety of spell heavy decks in the form of Cryptic Serpent. This 6-5 body won't ever get played for its full mana cost and whether you're filling the graveyard, making a control deck with a few creatures or a fast blue red tempo deck, this creature will do some serious work for you. Playing it for 5 mana is reasonable but I can certainly see it coming out in some games for just 2. Sitting at the number 3 spot is a very solid Boros card in the form of Honoured Crop Captain. This is a slightly better version of a Corda Paladin or Goblin Wardriver. For those people that were looking for a card to fill the gap for a red white go wide strategies, here is the card for you. It's certainly a worthy replacement in many peasant cubes for Sun Home Guild Mage. At the number 2 slot, which may have come as no surprise, is Manglehorn. While it may not be as good as Reclamation Sage due to no enchantment destruction, we finally have a replacement for Uktabi Orangutan, but with an upside. Manglehorn's first ability is May, which has a huge bearing on the game as you can still come into play with your opponent having no targets and not destroying any of yours. The second ability is deceptively good. Making all of your opponent's mana rocks come in tapped along with their artifact creatures means that they won't be able to use or block with them the turn they come in. This is really impactful. If you were playing either Orangutan or Viridian Shaman in your cube, this replaces it straight away and will certainly make an impact in all levels of cube. At the number 1 slot is a very aggressive red card with an upside in the form of Arncrop Crasher. A 3-2 haste creature for 3 is good enough by itself to get into many people's peasant cubes, but with the exert mechanic on top really gives it the edge. The fact that you may choose to exert it to stop a target creature blocking, leaving it tapped for a turn is a situational effect that your opponent may well forget to take into consideration. Early on this may be unblockable damage and later on could be the difference between them staying alive and lethal. If you can somehow give it vigilance or untap it, you'll be able to do a significant amount of damage during the game. Overall this is a really solid card with a flexible ability and being a warrior is just icing on the cake. So there we have my top 10 uncommon cards from Ammon Kept for Cube. Like I said at the start of the video, a lot of these cards are great additions to peasant cubes, although some may well make it higher. There are a lot of borderline cards too that just didn't make the list. I'd love to know what your thoughts are. Is there something that I've missed or would you change the order? Are there any cards in here that will definitely be making it into your cubes? Do let me know in the comments section below as I'm always interested to see what you all think. I'd like to again thank the Mana Base for sponsoring this video and adding me to their list of great content creators. Definitely do check them out at themanabase.com as all of your format needs will be covered from Pauper to Legacy and Cube. They're currently running a competition to create a new logo which will be running until the 30th of April. The winner will receive a booster box of Modern Masters 2017. If you're interested in this I'll put a link in the description below to find out more details. My video for the top 10 rares and mythics for Ammon Kept for Cube will be out on Tuesday, so do stay tuned for that. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button, share it, and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already for new videos every Tuesday and Friday. Don't forget to hit that notification button to know when each video is uploaded. With your support, we can really help the channel to grow. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.